what's going on, all you wrestling fans? If you guys are just joining, if you're watching this not live and you're watching this on repeat, make sure you guys hit the goddamn like button, stick the thumb up my rectum, and stick around because there's some stuff here to talk about while we sift through. Probably a timestamp down below if you want to skip ahead if you're not watching this live. If you're watching live, what's up to the chat? Let the alert go out to everybody. I'm super pumped up right now because I'm loaded on coffee. And tonight is Monetize This! I might have to have a couple of drinks tonight. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Can we party tonight at 11 p.m.? Or maybe a little bit earlier, 10 p.m.? Tonight on Monetize This, we'll see. Tonight, monetize this live right here on the Joe Cronin Show. You won't get the alert probably because I just gave you this alert. So make sure you're a patron or whatever the hell and you get the alert. Otherwise, look for my Twitter. Blah, 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 blah. You know the deal. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Give people a few minutes to get in here real quick. Give me that slip anyway. Yeah, let's go. Who's ready? Who's ready? Who's ready in the chat right now? Who's ready in the chat? Are you guys ready in the chat? Let's go, guys. Let's get this going, baby. I'm so weird down below. Oh, I feel good. I'm pumped up, man. I'm pumped up, man. I got new Stabbing Westward to listen to. I'm fired up, brother. I'm fired up. Order the new Stabbing Westward single now. You can order a CD, actually. Only a 1,000 people will get one. It's on their band camp right now. Put in the chat later on. Pretty pumped up about that. Shout out to those guys. And a full CD coming out next year. Kablooey. What's up, baby? What's up, chat? Have some water. I got Gengar behind me. He's ready to take a dump on me. We got Crown Jewel that apparently over-delivered for a lot of people, man. Apparently Crown Jewel over-delivered. I'm going to take phone calls, though, at some point, maybe. We'll see what's up. What's up to the chat? I just want to make sure the alert's going out, though. You ready for the Astros to destroy? Devastating Red Sox implosion, basically. I don't know, ma'am. What's up? What up, Ruben? How you doing, bro? How you doing, Ruben? All right, what's up? We're wet. We're... We got enough time now to get this friggin' alert to go out to everybody. WWE Crown Jewel last night. Vince McMahon is talking about uh, the Rampage thing, the backstage news on him. We're going to, you know, we're going to mention that a little bit. A little bit of what Vince McMahon's been thinking, saying, whatever. If it matters to anybody, I don't know. I don't know. I hope shopping was good for you. I don't know, man. Shopping right now? I don't know how shopping's going for you. I don't want to be out there shopping right now. Although it's actually probably better right now, right? I did tell everybody to buy their presents in October. Remember I said that to you guys? Now everybody else is catching on the news and everything. They're like, maybe get it done now. It's like I said that at the beginning of October. Remember that? Like, let's go. Problem is, don't have any money to buy anything. So it's always something, right? All the other years where I had the money to buy buy gifts, it was like I always bought them late because I fucked up something. Now this year, it's like you got to buy them early. Oh, I don't have the money this year. But other years, I had the money, and I didn't buy them early because of something else, because the product wasn't available, whatever. Uh, just, it's just funny how the life always works out to where you're going to be last minute no matter what. It's always last minute no matter what. It's just always works out to be this way. You know, I, I don't know. It's just like you just can't you can't get a clean a clean holiday, you know? I don't know. It just sucks. Uh, I I think Jake saw most of Crown Jewel, but I really don't know. I, I know that he sent me some videos where he was like reacting to Crown Jewel and stuff like that, but I don't know. You got Nike shoes? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So um Yeah, it's 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 a good time, but um, you know, I I'm looking at different things to get into and what I've been doing, and it's been just crazy. Uh, finding different things to to get into and doing some trainings. I I did some trainings, part time trainings on the side. Uh, and I was doing those and those are pretty cool, but yeah, it was like, I, I finished up all the trainings I had booked and I had to sell people on these trainings and it was easy to sell them because it was like, there was so many just people just doing so many things wrong. that were so simple. 
And so that was cool. But I don't want to talk about that really. I want to talk about wrestling and things like that. Uh, Kyle Palace, Dave says, uh, chief sales officer. Wow, really by profession? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. Anytime you want, uh, hit me up. What do you? Uh, didn't you say you were older than me, right? Didn't we talked about that like a while ago, right? And didn't you say you're a little bit older than me? I think you said that, right? Like you were watching wrestling in the '70s. I think I could have that wrong. Could be somebody else I'm thinking about. But yeah, hit me up anytime. Especially if you need another guy. Let me know. All right. So what's up, John? Uh, we're we're going to talk about uh, Vince McMahon. I'm fired up on coffee, too, by the way. So if I'm just, like, fucking spewing it out, you know, it, you know, that's... I am loaded right now on coffee. Like, I'm ready to go, bro. So it's going to be a fucking rip-roaring craziness if we get there. Um... Brock Lasner, I don't know. What's good in the hood says Awandi. I don't know, probably nothing for me, Awandi. What's up with you? Um, it is 2.30 p.m. It's a nice time. I've done a lot of things. Brock spotted with Shelton Benjamin. What? What does that mean? Like, what, dating? He's dating Shelton Benjamin? What are you talking about? What up, Big Merc? What up, Mr. Sinister? Mr. Sinister? Is that Johnny Ray Sinister or is that Mr. Sinister? I don't know. What up, Robo? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, Vince McMahon, uh, viewership news this is a big one. Wrestling Inc. Uh, dropped this one via the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Friday's WWE Super Size SmackDown on FS1 drew a 8,000, so 800,066. Rather, um, eight th oh, Jesus Christ, 866,000 viewers. TNT uh, Dynamite drew 578,000. So despite all that crap, you know, AEW wins. Maybe not in the demo, but still. Now, this is the report coming from the Wrestling Observer that WWE Chairman Vince McMahon was at the Golden One Center in Sacramento, California this past Monday when the official numbers came out, and it was noted that Vince McMahon didn't get mad in front of anyone, and that was key because there have reportedly been times in these situations where Vince can come across very immature when ratings have come out in recent weeks not favorable to WWE, and it was said that Vince was anything but that in response to the SmackDown versus Rampage numbers. I mean, probably because Vince McMahon, if this is a true report and this is a real report or whatever, probably because Vince McMahon probably calls this a throwaway. Now, if Vince had lost, I think he would have been angry. I think he would have been like, that's bullshit. We should never lose. Like, like I, I feel like Vince would have said, that's bullshit. We shouldn't have lost. But I feel like the fact that they were close and they had really low numbers, I think Vince already chalked it up that, like, we're on goddamn FS1. Fucking no one's going to find it. I think he already said, like, that's pretty much a failure, so I don't even care. So that's probably what happened there. So I, I'm, I'm not doubting that Vince McMahon was like, ah, whatever, who gives a shit? I'm not surprised. I want to say thank you to everybody in the chat, guys. Thanks to everybody who's been supporting on Patreon. I have a Patreon show that's coming out, Meant to Offend podcast. It's coming out. I'm going to be uh, ranting on some bullshit, so you're going to see that on Patreon in just a little bit. So look for that. We're going to have uh, Leah's going to be on at some point this week, JB potentially, a bunch of people. We got news on, on the new belt situation and what's going on. Um, you know, this this design is, is amazing. I think people are going to like it. We're going to have some fun. Hopefully tonight I'll monetize this. Not sure who's coming on, but it'll be fun. Um, yeah, Alec, Alec Baldwin is kind of a cunt, you know, but I mean, it's not his fault that he shot somebody. I mean, this was a, a prop issue, you know what I mean? Obviously someone's safety and props and stuff like that, but still one of my favorite rants ever by Alec Baldwin in, in a, in, gotta be one of the best movies ever, dude. The Glenn Gary Ross speech is still one of the best fucking scenes ever in a goddamn movie. I fucking love sales movies. I love movies about sales. I love movies about shit like that. And God damn it, if Glenn Gary Ross, this fucking movie is the fucking balls. Like, are you serious? Like, what are you doing? No coffee for you. And he tells the guy, no coffee for you. Coffee's for closers. And then the guy, one guy that goes, one guy that goes, the leads suck or whatever. And he's like, the leads suck. You fucking suck or whatever. That's the fucking greatest thing ever. Let's Do we have a little bit of it? Let's find it. Here we go. It's got to be somewhere. Glenn Gary speech. The best one. Fucking love it. The leads are shit. The leads are shit. The leads aren't shit. You are. <laughs> fucking love that movie, dude. And who belongs to the BM? Well, I'm not a leash, so I'm important. Put that coffee down. <laughs> Ah! 
Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> Oh my god, dude, this this kills me, dude. It kills me right now to just just to fucking just to see the fucking clip. Important. I'm gonna shoot someone on the set of my movie. Are they all here? All but one. Well, I'm going anyway. Let's talk about something important. I love that. Like, are they all here? Are they all here? All except one. Well, I'm going anyway. It's the whole fucking thing is great, bro. This is the best Alec Baldwin. I'm going anyway. Put that coffee down. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love this movie. Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm fucking with you? <laughs> I am not fucking with you. I'm here from downtown. I'm here from Mitch and Murray. And I'm here on a mission of mercy. Shit, you <laughs> You get the picture? You laughing now? You got leads. Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. You can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. <laughs> The fucking leads are weak. Dude, that's the... <laughs> Can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. You are weak. I believe... <laughs> All right, I've got enough. I'm just fucking... The leads are weak. The leads are fucking weak. You're weak. That was fun. I just fucking kills me every time. Oh my god, bro. Holy fuck does that just kill me. Fucking kills me. Kills me, bro. <laughs> the fucking leads a week. The fuck the fucking leads a week. You're fucking weak. Um it's very reminiscent of the Brand of the Brand of Brandon Lee incidents. I very much thought of the crow immediately when I saw this. I was like, "Oh my god, they're still fucking things up with these Hollywood blanks, with these Hollywood guns." Are you serious? And I'm sure we're going to talk about this a lot tonight on Monetize This. I'm sure we're going to talk about it tonight, and I am going to do my best to watch Crown Jewel before tonight, so I can give you some Crown Jewel shit, give you some SmackDown shit tonight. Um, but really do monetize this with everybody and have a good time. What's up, chat? In the chat, you guys uh, are wetting me down. Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you, John, for the support, you sexy bastard. Uh, yeah, if you want to give me and my, if you want to give my kids a Christmas, here's the link. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm sorry. Here you go. Here's the link, brother. Uh, Nightbot should have the correct link now, by the way. There's the Streamlabs link. But, you know, save it for tonight if you want for monetize this. Uh, we'll try to have some fun tonight. Try to keep us going all night long, baby. We'll have some fun. We'll figure out who the king's going to be tonight. We'll have a good time. The belt's on its way, apparently, for the new belt from Sith. He's recreated the Monetize This Championship, a brand new Monetize This Championship, coming courtesy of Sith Negan. That is beast-like stuff. Okay? Uh, speaking of money and the Glen Gary leads, let's Looks go. Looks like my little lass needs a shave. And Alec Baldwin <laughs> shooting someone in the dick. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, someone's dead, man. And then the director got shot a little bit, too. It's just a crazy thing. You know, apparently the, the safety coordinator or whatever went home earlier or some shit. It's like, dude, how many fucking things can you do wrong? These guys got to be in trouble for something. There's got to be some kind of protocol that's fucked up here. And I don't know what it is, but let's go to the donos. Oh! Motherfucker, here we go. Everyone knows I'm out the way. In my happy pants Could you perchance come and take these this chance And leave me here I'm a bad motherfucker Ain't got no fear What the time was the time motherfucker Time motherfucker Put it in a happy rhyme motherfucker Say it's clock o'clock Bang bang tick tock Fucking the suck Oil shock Two on consignment One in stock What's the time motherfucker Say it's clock o'clock it's clock o'clock for Alec Baldwin right now, I'll tell you that. 
Just showing some love. Happy anniversary to you and Leah. Thank you for the great content. Oh, man. MWM two times. Man, MWM, brother. Thank you so much for that donation, brother. Thank you. Um, thanks for saying that, too, man. Uh, we just kind of hung out and had a good time. I tweeted some funny shit about um, about my wife, which was fun. Uh, I took uh, took a photo of me and uh, Gavin the other day. I put it on Twitter. I took a lot of photos and put them on Twitter because I thought they were funny. But no better uh, picture than this one, which I look like a basically I look like a used car salesman who just sold a a 2002 Camry to like an eight, to like a 17 year old. Even though Gavin's like 12, but I look like I just sold and we took this on the porch. And I don't know why, but the way I got my arm around him. And the way my shirt's all untucked and like I'm wearing a polo and my douchey necklace and everything, I look like I just sold a 16 year old a 2002 broken down Camry. Like, oh yeah, guy, it's gonna be great. Listen, you're gonna love the car. It's gonna be fucking. Oh, it's gonna be fire. You're gonna be driving around. All the girls are gonna be like, oh, he's got the car. You know the deal. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about that leak right down there. That's what, I got. Ah, ah. That's what this looks like right here. That's what me and my kid look like. I look like I just sold him a 2002 Camry. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, I thought there were, that was a lot of funny stuff. And then I tweeted a bunch about uh, Leah and me and stuff like that. And I found some things. Yeah, it's a great time. And I miss Crown Jewel. Still haven't seen it. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. By the way, real quick plug for my friends, Dave Landau, my friend Dave Landau, and, of course, Derek Richards, comedians. Guys, if you're in Florida and wherever the fuck else, they are live. They're going to the comedy. You guys, go see them. Shout out, Joe Cronin wants me to suck you off. Stuff like that. We got Dave Landau, Derek Richards on tour together at the Tampa Improv. It's coming up. Get tickets now. ImprovTampa.com. It's going to be great. Dave Landau, you've seen him on the, the Anthony Cumia's show. You've seen him on Steven Crowder's show. Derek, you've seen him on my show. Alex Jones and all over the place. These guys are my buddies. We have a big podcast with them coming out. Uh, you're going to love it. Fucking Derek's hilarious. Fucking Dave Landau's hilarious. You know I'm fucking hilarious. It's going to be a fun fucking time. Plus, I got uh, a friend of mine. We're going to be doing a podcast as well. I, I have these very coordinated weekly shows that are going to be coming out soon, guys, that I have orchestrated, not with random dickheads I met on YouTube that are going to turn into cocksuckers and things like that, but actual people in the profession that I've met and that I know and that I've sent my stuff and they love it and they love this and they understand it. We've got contracts. We've got some sponsored things. Not a lot. Still going to be mostly on your support. But, man, we got fucking goddamn people formerly from WAAF in Boston that we're going to be doing a podcast with. I got these comedians coming on. We're friends with them. I'm going to hang out with them. That's going to be fun. Steven Crowder, shout out to him uh, in supporting this. It's a fucking huge thing. Fucking goddamn go see Derek Richards and David Landau. They're in Texas and Tampa, all over the U.S. Fucking, they're going to they're, they're gonna be so fucking good. They're going to give you, they're, they're so fucking good. They're going to tell you they have COVID, give you COVID at the show, and then you'll be happy if you die. Okay, it's going to be fucking amazing. So go out and see them. I swear to God you're going to jerk off to them. I promise you that. Promise you. MWM, thank you for the donation, my friend. You keep it hard, you keep it wet, you keep it long, and you keep it wrong, brother in the bed. In our own city, in Philly, we're pretty, yo, this whole city, we're gritty, yo, we might eat our own city, yeah, eat our own city, in the city, Philadelphia, we're gritty, we're gritty, it's getting be, we can survive off our motherfucking own PC, in Philly, we're gritty, in Philly, we're gritty, this whole city, we'll eat our own shitty, in Philly, that's why our mascot looks Oh, shit! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Kalalubima! <coughs> Kalalubima, what's up, my brother? What's up? Tonight is do or die. The Astros. If the Red Sox, blah, 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 we got to go back and listen to that because uh, it just fucking already went up. What the fuck is that? How are you going to cut the donation off? I haven't get close to reading it. The Astros, if the Red Sox win it all, I can win over $1,000. Let's go. The Shadow was a good movie by Alec. No, that's a good one, too. Kalel Bama, thank you so much, man. I, I'm worried, dude. I'm worried about the Red Sox at this point. I mean, listen, I think they needed to close it out the other day. This is a huge problem. You know what I mean? They They really needed to close this thing out. Like this, they should have put the pedal to the metal and never looked back. 
the minute the, they brought up the watch thing, it was the turnaround, dude. That's what's going to be called. It's going to be all about that taunting shit. You know, unfortunately. Yo, what's up, Mr. X? How you doing? How you doing, brother? Mr. X. Mr. X um, likes penguins. Where were you when I needed you the most? <coughs> Where were you? Whoa. I don't know, man. I was probably with my family or something like that when you needed me the most. You should probably get your brother to, to help you out. You know what I mean? Call me fucking crazy fuck. <laughs> Looks like my little lass needs Thank you. a shave. Um, so, yeah, so so Vince McMahon not phased by the numbers. I, I wouldn't be either if I was him with this. But to be honest, <coughs> who cares what Vince McMahon thinks, says, gets mad at, doesn't get mad at? Because in the end, the fucking show doesn't get better. So I don't care. I don't care if Vince McMahon is back. If, if Vince McMahon is backstage flipping out, who cares? He's never going to change anything. He's been flipping out. He doesn't change anything. If Vince McMahon is backstage not phased, well, th that's what I would expect is Vince not to be phased at all. He probably thinks like, oh, so who cares? You know, what I would be surprised about is when Vince McMahon is angry. If Vince McMahon gets angry or flips out, I'm actually surprised. What are you getting mad at? This is what you fucking create every week. Nothing's changed. You don't change anything. What the, what are you what the hell are you expecting? So I mean, I would be perplexed if I heard that Vince McMahon was flipping out because I would say like, well, why is he flipping out? He literally fucking rolls this same shit out every week expecting different fucking results. Why would you do that? Why would you ever do that? Isn't that the definition of insanity? Literally Vince McMahon is the definition of fucking insanity. Every time if he was trying to expect different results, what makes him not insane is that I don't think he expects different results. He just goes we're going to do something. By the way, how sad is it that a woman is going to win the, the queen's crown or whatever the fuck it is, and a woman can't look all pretty on the throne, right? The guy gets to look like a king. The women look like fucking idiots because they, they can't, you know, they have to wear fucking extra sweatshirts and shit and all this other stuff. It's like, bro, like, what's up? Like, that that that's what's going to happen? Wasn't didn't didn't Zelina win? I haven't seen everything yet, but I'm gonna watch it. But it's like Jesus Christ, how pathetic is that? Yeah, I'm Zelina Vega. I'm the sexy, beautiful woman, and I, I'm gonna win a crown. Which that probably didn't make people happy over in Saudi Arabia too much. And it's like I have to put it on like dressed like a fucking like a Halloween fucking outfit or something. Like this is just sad, bro. <laughs> this is, just looks terrible. It's like Zelina Vega should look just fucking beautiful. I mean, she does look beautiful anyway. I mean, she's does she ever open her eyes? But it's like, I don't know. Anyway, I, I heard that uh, from what I've seen and heard, it seems like more people were interested in, in Crown Jewel than they, they thought they would be. It, see, it, it To me, it sounds like it maybe over-delivered a little bit. The buildup was shoddy. It was kind of like a mini buildup to a small show, but instead it's a giant show in Saudi Arabia. And then the, apparently they delivered on things. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to watch the whole thing, you know, but I've been very busy this week. I'm, you know, I wish I wasn't busy, but, you know, fuck. Wish I wasn't, but that's the way reality is, man. Uh, and, um, we, we, you know, fuck, tonight on Monetize, all I can say is tonight on Monetize This. We'll talk about a lot of shit. But I'm going to do my best to give you another 10 minutes or so of this show or a little bit longer. We'll hang out here and read the chat, all that other bullshit. But, yeah, I, I just think it looks ridiculous. It, it should have been, she, you know, a night, whatever. It just looks stupid. But what are you going to do? You're in Saudi Arabia. I get it. But why why crown the person then in Saudi Arabia? I don't know. Whatever. Does it matter? Maybe it doesn't matter, you know? And they're just going to redo it again on Monday or Friday. They're just going to have her come out, you know, and sit down and she'll be all queened up and stuff like that. She's probably going to have that gimmick, you know, with the scepter, which would be nice. That's fine. I don't think the guy that wins needs it, but, you know, I think because, you know, we already had Brandon, uh, Col Corbin do uh, King Corbin for like, what do you do it for like two years, two and a half years of King fucking Corbin? That lasted a long fucking time. Alec Baldwin is just torn up over shoot. I mean, wouldn't you would be? You'd be like, fuck. What the fuck is he wearing around his neck in this picture, by the way? Hey, yo, take my little money, Joel, or I'll see you tonight. Ryan the Heel, dropping $2. What's up, Ryan? I will see you tonight for Monetize This, brother. What's up? What's up, the Spectral Citizen? How you doing, dude? Good to see you. Where's your Undertaker prank call vid? Hilarious. I don't know. No, wait, which one, Aaron Embry? What's up, Aaron? Which one are you talking about? 
Because what do you mean? Because there's a couple different ones, right? They get the picture. I'm trying to think which one you're talking about. You laughing now? You got leads. Mitch and Murray paid good money. Get their names to sell them. <coughs> you can't close the leads you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. You are weak. I <laughs> oh, my God. I can't deal with it. All right, let me look for The Undertaker. Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the one where, where it's about WrestleMania? And and I'm doing the thing where Undertaker's like Vince McMahon wants the Undertaker to get pinned and and Taker doesn't is like, I don't know, Vince, and that one? Or are you talking about the sex line call? Like which you know, I don't know, which one are you talking about? Let me know. I will find it, probably. I think it's what the Undertaker should have told Vince McMahon. Is that the one you're thinking of? Or the real WWE Vince asked Undertaker for help? I don't know. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. There's a couple of different ones. Let me see if this is the one you're talking about. Let's find out. No more guys. <coughs> I never ask you for another favor after a rock listener, but uh, I need you to. But who is this new talent? Well, what the hell does he do? Is this the one you're talking about? I don't I don't know which one you're talking about. I'm gonna look for the chat, see see which one you're talking about. Let me look let me look and see what you're saying. I didn't know if maybe you're talking about this one. This is from 2016. Is this the one you're talking about? I know I told you that uh I never asked you for another favor after a rock listener, but uh I need you to put over a new talent. Vince, you know I said that I would never ever help you again but who is this new talent let's let's bring him in his name is uh, the yeti <laughs> well what the hell does he do damn it show him yeti <laughs> <laughs> that was some kind of promo thing. Okay, so you're talking about the Undertaker sex line. Okay, I see what you're saying. Undertaker adult. Okay, here it is. All right, I found it. We'll close the show with that as I found it. Whoa. Is it? It's about six. Okay, we'll close the show with the Undertaker sex line thing. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. I got, I got you. Shout out to you, brother. You tell the oh yeah, I told the chick to rest in peace. <laughs> rest. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, anything else? Let me see here. Okay, we got everything about oh, yeah. what the Undertaker should have told Vince. Yeah, that's that's a good one too. That that might be privatized. I gotta fix that. So there's some I because I had to privatize so many things because when when YouTube was changing language stuff, I was worried. But then they didn't end up going forward with the extreme language stuff that they were gonna do. So, you know. God damn, you know, YouTube giveth, YouTube taketh away. You know, it's a big mess. But, you know, Chris Van Fishfile, uh criticized um, Dan, uh, Chris, uh, or Dan Lambert, apparently. So, uh, wait, what? Leah's texting me. <clears throat> Leah's texting me. She forgot something. Let me just see what she's saying. Okay, I don't know what she's saying. Um, the, the kids had some thing with the pumpkins at school or whatever, and she forgot the pumpkins. God damn it, Leah. Can't you remember anything? Um, now he's get All right, so so I guess Chris Van Fishfile said, uh, um, talked about the top stories of AEW. And this is like one of the biggest news stories today because wrestling news is just dead today, it looks like, other than some oddly placed praise for you know crown jewel so they said now is this getting a uh, real heat or is he actually getting x-pac heat maybe it's a combination of both but i was watching the other day dan lambert comes out cuts a promo 
no respect to X-Pac, we both love and have tremendous amount of respect for, but we understand what terminology means. I think it's more than it did, blah, blah, blah. Um, could have really benefited from the mic time. Someone else could have benefited from the mic time. Man, maybe it's because Ethan and Scorpio were so good on the mic, they needed to bring someone in to give them some sort of heel rub. I don't know. You know how does Chris Van Fish Filet not understand this? That this is like a mockery of Cornette. And by the way, Dan, Dan Lambert's been great on the promos. I don't know. It's so weird that Chris Van Fish Filet would criticize Dan Lambert. You're criticizing Dan Lambert of all things? Like, what the fuck? That's just weird. When does he talk about this? Why isn't it playing? Why is this muted? Let me see if I can pull it up. Known for pre-pandemic, it's <coughs> uh, been an adjustment. I know. For, so ten years on the on the YouTube channel, and Tom Cruise is like a small town matter of moments. What do they talk about this Dan talk, Lambert but, shit? Hey, that happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, and maybe it's a combination of both, but I was watching the other day and Dan Lambert comes out to cut a promo and people just like instinctively hate him. And like, I feel like that is X-Pac heat. Okay. I don't know. And this is no disrespect to X-Pac who we both love and have a love. tremendous yeah. amount of respect for, but and we, we understand what the terminology means here. Wow. Burying everybody. First of all, Chris Van Fishfilet is burying X-Pac and then he buries Dan Lambert. Holy shit, bro. Um, dude, I, I don't know. Listen, I like Chris. I like Chris Van Fish Filet. I kind of like him. But it's like, dude, you, like what? And someone else has said that it's go away heat too. I don't think so. I just think the heat's so hard. I think he's got so much fucking heat, like, and people mad at him that they, they don't know what the fuck to do. Like they're, they're, like, they're pissed. Let's hear some more. This is fucking weird. Sure. I, I don't know, though, man. Dan Lambert I mean, is one of my favorite things in pro wrestling. It is not go away heat for me. It is. Please continue talking. I really, really enjoyed Dan Lambert. Like, okay, that's interesting. Well, maybe he's maybe he's won you over as being a great heel. What is so? What is it about Lambert that's not grabbing it for you? Do you just think he's out of place, like curmudgeon-y? Like, what is what is it? Not <laughs> I think it's more that it 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 did feel like it came out of nowhere. Like it right. felt like it felt like it came out of nowhere, and he was getting all of this mic time when I felt like there were all these other people on the roster that could have really benefit benefited from this mic time and. You're making him the manager for Ethan Page, tremendous on the mic himself. Scorpio Sky, tremendous on the mic. Himself. Boring, boring, boring. Himself. It's not like they really needed a mouthpiece, and I just thought it was strange. Maybe it's because Ethan and Scorpio are so good on the mic that they needed to bring. Are they really? Are Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky really so good on the microphone? Let's see. Ethan Page promo. Ethan Page promo. Ethan Page. Hmm. Can't even fucking find a promo by the guy. <coughs> While it is between... Rob! Please, I, I'm, I'm just here as a friend, a friend in the locker room to welcome you to Impact Wrestling. Please have a seat. Let's have a chat. Who, who are you again? Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually wrong. My name's Ethan Page. And if you're not going to take the seat, please allow me to get more comfortable. <coughs> Perfect. Now that you're situated, Rob, I heard you say something that you're everybody's hero in the locker room. Everybody's everybody's stealing your moves. Rob while I nonchalantly sit here, let me look you in the face and tell you, you are no hero to Ethan Page, and I have never looked up to you once. You are right now. <laughs> well, clearly you've never watched an Ethan Page match. Nope. 
<laughs> because I would never, oh my God. ever do one of RVD's signature moves. I, I think I know what's going on here, Ethan Page. Uh, it, it's like a bucket list thing, right? You've always <laughs> dreamed of... So because Ethan Page can speak, I guess, like that, that Chris Van Fish Filet thinks that they don't need a mouthpiece or they shouldn't have Dan Lambert, so Dan Lambert should be speaking for people that can't speak. There is some validity to that in a way, but honestly, I find Ethan Page to be able to cut a promo and be able to talk, but I kind of find, unless there's other ones I've missed that are just unbelievable, Ethan Page isn't jumping out to me as someone that's so fire on the mic that's so crazy on the mic. He might be pretty good, though. I remember he cut a pretty good one against Darby in the back. I remember in a promo. That was pretty good. I don't remember exactly. But, you know, I think Ethan Page is good, and I think he can cut good promos. And potentially he can cut really good ones if they let him go, maybe. I don't know. But, you know, Dan Lambert is is a cartoonish character that sticks out to me at this time. Ethan Page just kind of is like a guy that blends in who can talk. But Dan Lambert sticks out, comes out of the TV to me with his fucking annoyingness. I don't know, man. I just think it's weird to, to go after Dan Lambert. Th there's a whole bunch of guys who can cut a promo like Ethan Page. But there's not a lot of guys that can get the heat that Dan Lambert's been getting, in my opinion. Whether it's go away heat or whatever. Go away heat is like what WWE does with a lot of people. I don't think Dan Lambert is go away heat. I, don't know, I just don't know what... Like, Scorpio Sky? Is Scorpio Sky really is better at cutting promos? Like, I don't get it. Like, what? I don't think that... I mean, Scorpio Sky is good, but he's not... He's not that great on the promo. He's he's not memorable. He's just... He can hold... Scorpio Sky can cut a promo, like, and can do the wrestling promo thing and be like, yo, I'm going to tell you something. Check this out. But he doesn't... He's not hitting the level of getting the crowd to react. If Scorpio Sky is so good, why can he never get the crowd to react to him the way Dan Lambert's got the crowd to react to him? So, sorry, never heard the crowd boo or cheer as loud for either one of those guys when they've said anything compared to what Dan Lambert's done. So, right there, I just don't fucking agree. I could have really benefit, benefited from this mic time. And you're making him the manager for Ethan Page, tremendous on the mic himself. Scorpio Sky, tremendous on the mic himself. No, they're not fucking tremendous on the fucking microphone. They're not fucking tremendous on the mic. I don't care how much you want to blow fucking fondle every WWE or AEW wrestler, Mr. Fish Filet. I don't care how much you like them and they're your friends and you want them on your podcast so you blow everybody. I don't give a shit. They're not fucking tremendous on the microphone. You know who's fucking tremendous on the mic? The Rock. The fucking Rock is tremendous on the mic. Fucking Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky are not fucking tremendous. In fact, you know what? The Rock is electrifying on the mic. That's what The Rock is. The Rock is fucking electrifying and legendary, okay? Tremendous is fucking like somebody who actually cuts good promos. Like fucking Chris Jericho is tremendous on the mic. Chris Jericho, tremendous. The Rock is electrifying. And fucking Scorpio Sky and fucking goddamn Ethan Page are not tremendous on the mic. Those guys are good good enough on the mic. They're good enough or good on the mic. They're good on the mic. Scorpio Sky is good on the mic. Ethan Page is good on the mic. They're not fucking tremendous on the mic. Kevin Owens is tremendous maybe on the mic. Maybe. Maybe Kevin Owens is tremendous on the mic. These guys are not fucking tremendous on the mic. It's a fucking stupid word to use. Dan Lambert is fucking tremendous on the mic. Except Dan is has a little too much scripting that he's that he's spitting out a little bit in a way robotically but well delivered, you know, sort of thing. That's what I would say. That's my criticism. But god damn it to say that Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are tremendous on the mic. Not tremendous. They're good. Which is good. They don't they don't usually make mistakes. They're usually pretty good to the point and cut a pretty good promo at times. But I haven't seen it. What's fucking tremendous? about what they do. What's like amazing or like top notch, top tier? I don't think anything is they're like the best of average. They're the best of average. That's what it is. Now if you want them to take the maybe they got another level that I don't know about and in a couple of years, Scorpio Sky will be cutting promos like The Rock. Maybe they do. Maybe they could. 
himself. It's not like they really needed a mouthpiece. And I just thought it was strange. <laughs> Maybe it's because Ethan and Scorpio are so good on the mic. They needed to bring someone in to like give them some like a heel rub. I yeah. Yeah. They're so good. Like, yeah. Like maybe it's cause they're so good on the mic that they needed to bring in a guy to be like a heel or something. <laughs> no, you know what it is? They're not good enough. They're not fucking good enough. Cause if they were good enough, the crowd and the people would fucking boo them. They would be booed if they were good enough. Or if it's not that, it's that they're they're good enough, they're pretty good on the mic, but we really need to get people to hate them. How can we do that? We'll bring in a manager that's this crazy cocksucker. That's what we're doing. It's not about how good or not good they are on the mic. It's about how good Dan Lambert is going to be. It's about how Dan Lambert's going to get great heat. That's what it's about. It's not about how good or bad Scorpio Sky or Ethan Page are. They're seven out of they're six, seven out of ten fucking competitive wrestlers, personalities. Wrestling wise, they're better, they're good. Like Scorpio Sky, I love Scorpio Sky in the ring. I think he's like very solid. Very, very solid in the ring. Love Scorpio Sky. Love and Ethan Page is pretty good too, but I I'm more familiar with Scorpio Sky. But the bottom line is, are they are they a personality in the ring? Not really. Scorpio Sky is like kind of like Ricochet. You know, but he's better on the mic than Ricochet, but it's like he's not much. It's like very similar. Dan Lambert has a fucking personality that explodes out of him. Scorpio Sky doesn't have a personality that explodes out of him and a character that explodes out to you. Neither does Ethan Page. They're they're sorry. I mean, like, what what, what do you why is Chris Van Fishfilet searching for excuses on what's going on here? It's very weird. I don't know, but that first promo where they were up in the like press box, you know, the, like the I was just like, no one seems to be caring what they're talking about. Okay, fine. Fair. Hey, to each his own. What? That's not the, is that their first, that's not their first promo. The first promo was in the ring. Unless he's talking about the first time he had those guys all around him, they were up in the press box. And yeah, we said that it was getting redundant at that point because they had sort of done that three times now. Dan Lambert, hey, you, you guys stink. We're great. Like, we were criticizing that because it wasn't the best creative uh, creative idea because they'd already done this over and over again. But what do you mean? No one seemed to be knowing what they're doing. You know, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I sort of see it because some people did say this, and I get what he's saying a little bit. But here's the fact of the matter. Dan Lambert is more entertaining than Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. I don't know why that is. It's just the way it is. Sorry. Like, maybe they're, maybe that's because they're not ge getting the opportunity that they could have. Like, Ethan Page was fairly decent in that TNA Impact promo I just saw a minute ago. But is he really going to get on? Is Ethan Page ever going to get on the same level is Dan Lambert getting booed or getting cheered you know I don't know so far no so I'm just going on what I'm seeing what the fuck is Chris Van Fishfile seeing I like it, it reminds me of like when Jim Cornette would do the uh like Cornette's minute or whatever back in the the throes of the yeah yeah, yeah right yeah when yeah <laughs> no it doesn't because you just said the guy sucks and it's go away heat so it, it it doesn't remind you of that what do you why is chris van fish agreeing with this he should be like yeah but that was good because what is he talking about but just take like as a child i it was bad as a I, child i was abused uh nick houseman continue i had no idea what was going on i was like what is this man talking about as an adult i look back on it and i'm like oh he was just trying to say like inside things that you know would really cater to this I think Dan Lambert does a really good job of that, right? Like he sounds like he sounds like what Vince McMahon says about AEW's product, right? Like he yeah. is, he is the Vince McMahon of the AEW Hello, universe. Everybody. And don't get me wrong, this is no disrespect to Dan. I've never met him, but he seems like a, a great human being. All I'm saying is that there's like certain cadences, I think, in a wrestling promo. And I just feel like there's certain times when he's getting like booed like crazy, especially early on in those promos. Yeah. Where I feel like there would be a moment where maybe he pauses and I just feel like he's like, I don't trying to get to the end of his promo. Like, oh, th this is my next line. I got to say this. And then this. I agree with this. See, this is the first thing I agree with. I don't agree with the heat. I think he's getting heat and it's good. I think he's doing a great job of getting heat. But this part I agree with, that Dan Lambert seems to have had this stuff all scripted out, and he knows the bullet points of things he's going to say, so he starts rambling on, and, and, and he's delivering it too fast, where, it, like, almost like he, like he said, he's speeding it out, like, like here's my next line, instead of keeping it flowing, like, like he's a little too robotic at times. That is, 100%, Chris Van Fishfilet is right about that. But...
And that's where Dan Lambert could do a little bit better. But I don't think this is really that go away he thinks Tom about. Very happy to be joined. Whoa, 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 whoa. When AEW decided to come to Miami, <coughs> the home of American top team, Tony Khan called and asked if the BMF champion Jorge Masvidal and the two divisions. He's pausing there. Great. And UFC champion and greatest female fighter of all time, Amanda Nunez, would make an appearance. But nobody said anything about doing an interview or endorsing this show. In fact, as an old school professional wrestling fan, I was skeptical of even coming to this place in the first place. And not because I'm a busy guy running the largest and most successful mixed martial arts gym in the history of this planet. Or because I got better things to do this week, like head out to Las Vegas and see my guy Dustin Poirier knock out Conor McGregor again. It was much more simple than that. I was skeptical about coming for one reason and one reason only. See, I think he's got a lot to say, and he's really rambling through it, and I don't have a problem really with this. And that reason is AEW sucks. <laughs> I thank Tony for his offer, but said if I wanted to enjoy an evening of professional wrestling, I'd have to break out the old VHS put in some tapes of championship wrestling from Florida, 1970s and 80s, and sit back and watch Gordon Soley call some matches of real wrestlers. Guys like Eddie Graham and Johnny Valentine. I'd watch Dusty Rhodes, Terry Funk, Harley Race, and Jack Briscoe tear up a wrestling ring. I'd probably get through the Barry Windham Rick Rude era, but at that point, I'd have to turn it off because the sad truth is professional wrestling's gone nowhere but downhill since the late 1990s, and this product is unwatchable. But Tony said, hey, no, you're wrong. He said, AEW is doing it the right way. He said, we have a locker room full of men and women representing every. It's like. I get what he's saying because, like, Dan Lambert, Dan Lambert, for what I understand, has not been a wrestling manager for, like, 30 years or 20 years or 10 years, right? I don't believe. He's been a guy that maybe tried a couple little times, and, and at home he knows he can ramble and do these things, and he's like, man, I'd love to give that a shot, come out there and cut a promo as, like, a heel or something. You know, and so that's what he's doing. And so, yeah, he he seems in a, in a way a little bit out of place in some ways, but he's also not a wrestler, and he's, and he's not a tenured guy in this. And to me, like, it's working on both levels. Because if he sounded like Jim Cornette, like, I'll tell you, motherfuckers, yeah, you got a two out of ten times. It's like he talks so well that it would almost seem too good to be true. But because Dan Lambert speaks like this, he comes out. But I do get that sometimes, by the way, this is his better promo. This is, we are, to be fair, watching one of his better promos. Like, Dan Lambert's recent ones are the ones that have really kind of, like, run out a little bit. But I still think they're really good. I still think Dan Lambert's been cutting 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 promos for him, you know, like, for to me. He's more entertaining to me than half the other guys, you know, than half the flip-flop, flipping fucking fuck-off cartwheel people. He still is more entertaining than most of those people. So I don't care. And it pisses me off that Chris Van Fish Filet thinks that this is the problem. You know, oh, this is the guy that's the problem. Like, dude, I don't know why, but that pisses me off. Because it pisses me off because, like, this is one thing that I actually enjoy usually. And now, you know, Chris Van Fish Filet is going to say, this is go away, shitty heat. Like, what are you talking about? You know what sucks is the boring people that come out and cut promos. How about that? Or the people that can't cut promos and just do flippy, floppy fuckery. You know, that pisses me off about what Chris Van Fishfly said. Ah, uh, yeah. Smoke weed every day. What up, Will Tactics? Will Tactics tipped $4.20. I hope I'm not out of line, but Crown Jewel was actually... Oh. I didn't find myself to be bored <laughs> except during the Dew Drop versus Vega match. Good job for once, WWE. Thank you, Will Tactics. Yeah, a lot of people saying they actually like Crown Jewel. Um, but so th there's where I agree with Chris Van Fish Filet. I think Chris Van Vliet is, is right 
about the fact that Dan Lambert's it sounds like he's reading, trying to quickly run through a sales script. It's like Dan Lambert is reading us all his sales script. Oh, yeah, we've been manufacturing products for 30 years in front of so many different people that it's almost unbelievable. And, and by the way, uh, you know about our customer service? Our customer service is one of the best in the world because if you call and you got a problem, we're going to fix it for you, right? You wouldn't want someone to shit and just fuck you over and then not fix it for you, right? Well, we'll fix it for you, right? Like, that's what he sounds like instead of being like, well, you know, our manufacturing is like second to none. For over, for over about 30 years, we've been one of the leading uh, technology industries. And, you know, when there is a problem, you give a call to customer service. And customer service is going to answer your call. 20 so that like that's what we're talking about. I understand that. I am on board with that. Like, Cornette sounds like Cornette, whether he's ranting on someone on the side or going out and performing it. Whichever one, you can't tell the goddamn difference. It's almost amazing, Right. I try to be like that myself when I'm ranting and screaming about something, but I'm not really mad about it, but I'm trying to make you think I'm mad about it because I'm trying to entertain everybody and you guys. Many times people go, wow, Joe was really angry about that, but it's like I'm smiling because later on I'm like, I really wasn't angry. It was just fun to put on that show. But then sometimes I have flipped out and been angry and you really, sometimes it's hard to tell which one is which. And I like the idea of that. You don't know if you're getting me or Joe Cronin. You don't know what Cronin you're getting here. You know, is that the act or is that the guy? Which one is it? We don't know. That's the best. Will Tactics, thanks for the donation. So, but Dan Lambert in real life is much more toned down, much more sort of sales, salesy and inspirational and stuff like that and sweet. But out there, he's trying to be Jim Cornette. And when he's trying to be Jim Cornette, I got to tell you something about this. And then the other thing about, I'll tell you. And and then did you know that if my guy's going to be the one? It's like, and he sort of doesn't have that. So I see that. That from Chris Van Fish Filet, I totally understand. I think he's right. I get that. And that's why Dan Lambert isn't an 8, 9, or 10 promo a lot of times. That's why Dan Lambert a lot of times is a 6, 7, or a 7. You know, And sometimes he's an 8 when he fires you up a little bit. But there's always something a little bit screwy with the delivery. And that's what we're talking about. I agree with that. But what I don't agree with is that it's all go-away heat. I don't agree with that. I think some of the fact that, I, that you don't 100% believe he's part of the wrestling world is part of the the heat that that, you're, that he's getting to and so whatever whatever you got to do to get people to boo like that at this point in the wrestling world and industry god damn it i'll take it you know you know go away heat is when the fans are chanting aw at hell in a cell because you made some dumbass fucking decisions you know what i mean uh, Derek Kantz in the chat says, that's exactly what he sounds like, Joe. All he's got to do is slow down a little bit and let the audience react. You're right, Derek. That's the thing. I think if he if he wrote a little bit less of the story, because I think he's writing all these promos. So I think if he wrote less or at least toned it down, whichever way it is, if he's writing these things, tone it back. If he's going off the cuff on bullet points, tone it back. Like you said, you know what I think about AEW? I think AEW sucks. I think every single person in this building right now has got to be the biggest sucker for having purchased the ticket to this garbage show. I think Tony Khan's a sucker for paying me to be here tonight. And you know what? I'm going to go back there and he's going to shake his head at me and he's going to say, man, why did you have to do it that way? Why did you have to do it? And I'm going to say, you know what, Tony? That's the loudest those people got tonight because I told them the truth. And you know what people hate? Especially stupid people. Do you know what stupid people hate? The truth about themselves. That's what I think, Tony. And you know what else? You know why you hate it that I go out there and do that, but yet you keep paying me to do it? You know it's the truth, too. And there's something inside. You like this destruction. So if this is what your legacy is, Paying a man like me to go out in front of your fans and tell them the truth about how bad you're fucking it up? What does that say about you? All I can say about you is without guys like me and without daddy, Tony Khan can't put his little wrestling dream on TV. You're a sad little man, and thanks for the paycheck. That's what I say to Tony Khan. You know, he steps back and says, Hey, you want your jumbo? And fuck it, huh? And want it, huh? You know what I want, huh? 
Like that's what he's doing right now. But I get it. And Jim Cornette would would you know obviously his cadence the best you know whatever. But I still like Dan Lambert a lot. He still really entertains me, guys. I got to be honest. And I'm sorry, but Scorpio Sky and this other guy and whoever else, I haven't I haven't really heard a promo from those guys that have made me say, "Wow, here we let's get more of that." But I've heard Dan Lambert and I've thought, "Let's get more of that." He just needs a little work, man. Give him a little work. Hell, Jim Cornette, why don't you call Dan Lambert and and help him? And I know that Jim Cornette isn't on best terms with AEW and those people and everything else. Some give a guy a call and say, "Hey, man, slow it down a little bit. Get into it a little more. Start really feeling sexy in the words. You know, start riding the wave instead of trying to plow through the wave, because Dan Lambert is so naturally gifted at speaking." that without much of that knowledge and without all the experience, he's still able to go out there and rattle that stuff off. So you're talking about a 6, 7 out of 10 solid promo from a guy who doesn't know anything really or know a shitload or doesn't have the experience to, sl- to start slowing it down. Can you imagine what happens if Dan Lambert tones it down a little bit and also gets a little coaching and gets a little more experience? That guy will be, you know what I mean? He might, if Jim Cornette's a 9.5 out of 10, right? Because we'll always never give a 10. But we'll say Jim Cornette's like a 9.5 out of 10. Dan Lambert could be a solid 8, which is fucking great. Fire for a manager. If Bobby the Brain Heaton was a 9 and Jim Cornette was a 9.5, but Bobby the Brain Heaton on commentary was a 9.5 and Jim Cornette was an 8, because I think Jim Cornette on commentary was an 8 or an 8.5. But Bobby the Brain Heen was like a 9.5. But but manager-wise, switch it around, Jim Cornette was was better. But not by much. They were so good, both of the two of them. Amazing. No one's no one in the industry is like those two guys right now. They're not even close. We have a whole bunch of people that I, I would suck a dick if they could be a 7. We can't get that. So... Anyway, tonight is Monetize This. I hope you guys join me tonight. Remember, we're going to be live tonight around 10 p.m.-ish, 11 p.m.-ish, whatever. Look for the alert tonight live. You know, uh, Monetize This. Um, We'll talk about more of the Alec Baldwin stuff, some of the other shit. And um, thank you guys for the donos during the stream. Hit the like button, stick the thumb up my ass. Um, Thank you, Derek Hans. I love Dan Lambert. Uh, You know, you don't know. We don't know what what it's going to be from JoJo. Thank you guys for being on Patreon. I'm going to have some Patreon shit coming out, and we'll be live tonight for Monetize This. And because people requested it, here is The Undertaker um, sex line. (laughs) Oh, that's huge. Mm, Some people tell me that. Some find it underwhelming, but it's all about how you use it. That's very true. Mm. (laughs) Damn right. She's fat. I can tell she's fat. Mm-hmm. Honey, I'm having a good time tonight. I'm just sitting here. Oh, yeah? You got... What color is your hair? Red. S- 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 oh. Super chat party! Let's go. Oh, yeah? Dan Lambert is great at what he does, Lowell. <laughs> I think he is, too, but he's not, you know... He's, you know, he could do better is what we're saying, furry balls. But I do think that Chris Van Fishfilet is a psycho for thinking Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are more entertaining on the mic because they haven't been. It's just a fact, you know. Could they be better? Maybe, but they certainly never have shown me that. I think Ethan, pa- I think Scorpio Sky is like a 6 out of 10 on the mic or a 7 out of 10 on the mic, maybe. Probably a 6 out of 10 on the mic. Good. That's good. Good job, Scorpio. He can speak. He could probably teach people how to speak a little bit. But it's not Dan Lambert is way more entertaining. When I hear him start rattling off shit, I'm like, man, what's he gonna say? Holy shit. I don't think that about Scorpio. By the way, Dan, this Undertaker call has fifty three thousand views on it. Holy shit. I love red. I love red. <laughs> it looks great on me. <laughs> I do. I love red. My that brother the same color on your Cooch. I have a brother who wears curious, red too. Right. I love the color of red. It it just shines. It brings out your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Your pubes. Red's a great color. It's 
a lot of fun. I'm horny sure. as hell. Yeah, are you stroking it right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but babe, hold on a minute. Let me get to. I was smoking a cigarette, waiting. I heard the music they played. It was like the fires of hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hell, I might have been drinking a whole lot tonight, but that music sure did wake me up. And the sweet sound of your voice is the most beautiful thing. I've ever heard. Where are you from? Hell. Death Valley. I'm sorry. Where Where do you live? What area of the country do you live in? Death Valley, Joe. Death Valley. Hello. Can you hear me? I'm Death Valley. Oh wow! Down in in Texas. I'm traveling right now because um, that's what I do. I travel around a little bit here and there for my for work, but normally I'm down in Texas. Cool, you sound like you're from Texas. Thank Hell you. yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Are you stroking that cock right now? Mmm. Yeah. No. No. Is it getting nice and hard for me? No. Can't say no. Not yet. <laughs> well, let's get it hard. <laughs> like the rock. <laughs> like what? You like to get hardcore. <laughs> it's like uh It's like the rock. Bob Seger song. Like a. It could get rock hard. Start singing like a rock oh, yeah. singer. Get it rock hard for me. Oh, I get <laughs> it. Oh. <laughs> Start singing the Bob Seger song. What do you like to do? Oh, I get rock. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, man. Let me get. Like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next line? I don't even remember. Oh, like, like a rock. Man. <laughs> mm, damn girl. Yeah. I'm harder than Rocky Mavia. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you like barbed wire? Uh, I had a long day, and this is like rub. I haven't touched this. Mmm. Mmm, you haven't. I love. Pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Did you say pizza? I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe it. I just spilled my I spilled my beer all over myself. Oh, my God. Did you come? <laughs> oh, no, no. I wish it was that easy. Oh, this is not. I, I spilt it all over my privates. How's that feel? Yuck. Wrong. Wrong. Oh, so damn wrong. Let me I tell you. Mm, sometimes they call me a demon. Why? Because I am the Lord of Darkness. And yeah. she cuts you off What's your name again? Angry and say, Let me finish. I'll, we, I'll we, drive you The Lord hell. of Darkness. <laughs> It's not yeah. funny. You will be my queen. Of course. Adna Babla. Still give her the last ride. Give her the last ride. <laughs> Don't be in vain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That sounds fun. <laughs> Next opponent at WrestleMania. What's that? Hello? 
Wrist. What's that? <laughs> 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 you still on a fucking line? I'm telling you, Joe should have like, started talking. If she interrupted him, he'd be like, "Let me finish." Just get angry. Are we? Are, are, what the hell's happening? Oh, it's good. Hello. Are you still there? I muted my phone. Why? <laughs> I got excited. I spilled another beer. I would walk through the fires of hell to be with you. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Of course. Mmm. Mmm, I hit you with a tombstone. <laughs> I call that the sex move. <laughs> oh. They taught me it once. Who taught you? <sighs> My daddy. The bullet Bob Armstrong. <laughs> I see. You have a beautiful voice, I'll tell you that, though, when the picture on the website. I want to choke slam. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Thank Jeez, you. Switch. You're welcome. Ask her if she's into butt <laughs> stuff. Uh, <laughs> I always like to break the ice before we get into this, but uh, do you like the butt stuff? <laughs> the butt stuff. I like it for you to lick my butt. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm talking about <laughs> yeah, tossing salad. Caesar. Do you like butt stuff? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> then why did you ask me? I want to find out the parameters. <laughs> parameters? We can talk about whatever you oh like. My God. Six feet deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Did you mute your phone again? What was that? I thought you muted your phone again. My phone is awful. That's one thing I'll say. I'm, I'm in this hotel room. And every five minutes, I swear the lights are going out. Why? Because they don't pay their bills. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. <laughs> it's no holiday in, I'll tell you. What? No uh, La Quinta. Uh, no Motel? La Quinta. La Quinta. <laughs> yeah. DNA sus papeles. <laughs> I ask them sometimes. <laughs> One minute. Oh my god, bro. That was a great call. Oh. Yeah, Here we go. Everyone knows I'm out the window. Yep, yo, motherfucker, no romance, cause there ain't no chance in my happy pants. Could you perchance come and take this dance and leave me here? I'm a bad motherfucker, ain't got no fear. The what UK, time, baby! Time, motherfucker, time, motherfucker. Put it in a happy rhyme, motherfucker. I say it's clock, clock. Bang, bang, tick tock. Yo, fucking suck. suck. Oil shock. Cause I'm a one in stock What's the time, motherfucker? Say Glock, Glock I say Glock, Glock Love to you, Joe, from UK, mate Thank you, mate All the way up there from York The UK Brian Jardine, how's it going there? You cock Nah, man, thank you so much for the 30 uh, Euros, it looks like <clears throat> Thank you so much, man Worth more than American money now. Thank you so much, bro, for that 30 bucks. That's uh, wicked sexy of you. Thank you so much, man. Shit, we done... We've done, um... 
Over a hundred dollars, about a hundred dollars on this stream, man. You guys are beasts for just a fun little quick stream. That's fire, bro. Thank you guys so much for that support during the stream. Hit that like button, send it away. Um, I forget what my Vin Jesse Ventura sex call was like. Do you guys remember? I don't remember it. I remember I said something like, what I always do is I wrap up my whores before I beat them. Want to find out why the macho man called me his daddy? Because I used to rape him. That's why. I don't know. It was something like that. <clears throat> anyway, it was a lot of fun, man. I had a lot of fun six feet deep. I hope Jesse J's out there listening, man. Jesse, I love you, brother. Hit me up. Maybe we can get you on Monetize This tonight. Uh, and now uh, we can get Jesse on the show, talk over everybody. It'd be great. Um, better than no one talking, I'll tell you that. Um, shout out to Jesse. And shout out to Sith Negan, who has just been beast-like in the, in the creation of the brand new Monetize This Championship. Um, Sith Negan really pushed hard to me to get it. And I wasn't sure. And, and Sith really, really, really made that championship possible. We haven't seen it yet. I don't know where it is or what's going to happen with it, but apparently it's coming. And if it, it, it could be beast like you to be honest. And that's uh thanks to Sith Negan, man. I can't wait to see what happens with it. It's going to be nuts. But yeah, Alec Baldwin accidentally shot someone. It wasn't his fault. I mean, the gun was just set up wrong. You know what I mean? But you know, <clears throat> Alec Baldwin, kind of a political scumbag, but, you know, I love Alec Baldwin in uh, the Glenn Gary Ross, you know? Second prize is set of stick. It's the best. Close the lead you're given. You can't close shit. You are shit. Hit the bricks, pal, and beat it, because you are going out. The leads are weak. The leads are weak. The fucking leads are weak. You're weak. I've been in this business <laughs> 15 years. What's your name? Fuck you. That's my name. <laughs> You know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here tonight. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. And your name is your wanting. And you can't play in the man's game. You can't close them. Then go home and tell your wife your troubles. Because only one thing counts in this life. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. You hear me, you fucking faggots? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, this movie is fucking unreally funny. Like this scene is unfucking, fu unbelievably funny to me. Something important. <laughs> Coffee's for closers only. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm fucking with you? Well, anyway, let's talk about something important. <laughs> Coffee's for closers. I love the look on the guy's face. It's for closers only. <laughs> you think I'm fucking with you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love that movie. I can't get enough of it. I read it was a low-budget production, so they didn't hire Hollywood pros. They had a local prop guy from New Mexico. Yeah, isn't that lovely? Uh, slow death. What's up, man? Yeah, they fucked that up real good. These are the Glenn Gary Ross leads. Fucking movie's great. I'm an island boy. We're going to talk more about Island Boy. By the way, everyone's talking about Island Boy now, man. That was that was fucking... We got to talk more about Island Boys tonight. How about... I think Ryback singing the Island Boys song was pretty good the other day. If you missed that, go check that out. It is Glock O'Clock, baby. No doubt about it, man. Hey, thank you so much, Glenn Gary Ross. It's a great movie. The Alec situation reminds me, yeah, everybody's just talking about how it's like the Crow situation again, man. Brandon Lee's death, I mean, it was, this time the actor didn't get killed, though. The director got injured, and then the, I think it was the VP or the the camera director, I, I don't remember, the key, somebody got killed, and I forget her name or what part of the production she was. But I do remember when it happened to Brandon Lee when I was a kid, I was, I was about, well, how old was I? About. I was about 11 years old when The Crow, or 12 years old maybe, when The Crow came out, and I loved The Crow, and to find out Brandon Lee died, that was just awful, man, because I loved him in the movie, and we couldn't wait, and you know, Bruce Lee's kid, and all these other things. Yo, what's up, brother? Oh, you want some food? I'm going to come up and make some sandwiches. You want some sandwiches? You want some sandwiches? Yeah, brother. Hey, come here. Hey, Cuddy. Hey, buddy. You want some sandwiches? Finn, you want some sandwiches? Hey, bring me one of those guys. Hey, can I have a chip, Finn? 
Bring me a chip, chip, Finn. Hey, wait, come back here. What's going on? Hey, I want a chip. Oh, hell, you got this bottle of water here. I'm going to drink this bottle of water. Hey, hell, hell, hell. Oh, it's so weird. Hey, you know what? Hey, remember last month when Martha came down and she said that she was going to buy us bagels for like a week? And then she and she didn't. Why didn't she ever do that? She said it. She spent the whole morning saying, hey, guys, I'm going to buy you bagels all week and everything. And she never bought us bagels. I don't understand that. And, we, and you know what I mean? We, 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 we made our quotas and everything. And she said, and that was before. We weren't even doing so as well. And she was still going to buy us bagels. And now we're crushing the quotas. And she's not even buying us bagels. I don't understand it. We don't even get a, I even get a raise a bagel. Nothing, you know. I mean, her for I mean, did she get fired or something? I, you know, I called over in New York the other day to see if she was still working there. She wasn't there anymore, and I, I was like, hey, is Martha still here? Because she, you know, she, she, pro she promised us that said vehicle. She didn't give it to us. So I thought, hey, maybe there's a different regional sales manager. So I tried to call the regional sales manager, and he's in Maine on vacation. And then I said, left him like three voicemails and everything, and I, but I didn't hear anything back from him. But you know, I was thinking maybe, hey, tonight, man, if you. You know, maybe you could send him an email or something, let him know, you know, because we're sitting here, we're, we're, we're way above, uh, you know, quota, you know, I mean, I don't understand the New Hampshire stores, uh, they've been getting like parties and stuff like that, and one of their top guys uh, last month, he got a watch and everything, and, and you know, we, we, we haven't even been told anything, we don't have numbers, we don't have, not even emailed a fucking email to say, hey, good, good, good job over there, you know, nothing, you know, if you could just give something, that'd be nice, you know, maybe. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. Thanks for the donos. I will see you tonight for Monetize This. Keep it hard. Keep it long. Keep it wrong. And stick the thumb up my... Yes! I'll see you tonight. You love me. One bullet was real And now somebody's dead